Number 14. Answer the following questions about a Blu-ray laser. A. The laser on a Blu-ray player has a wavelength of 405 nanometers. In what region is the electromagnetic spectrum? Is this radiation? And what is its frequency? All right. So I have a whole spectrum of the electro, you know, of the electromagnetic spectrum, and it goes all the way from gamma rays to broadcast and wireless radio, so radio waves. So gamma rays have a really, really, really short wavelength, so their waves are going to be very, very, very close to each other, as opposed to radio waves who have longer wavelengths, which means that the waves are going to be very, very far apart from each other. So we just have to figure out where 405 nanometers are in the spectrum. But the spectrum that was given to me by the textbook is in meters. We have to first convert, I'm going to put A here, 405 nanometers into meters. You guys should know how to do this, right? So from nanometers to meters, the shorthand way is all you got to do is just divide by 10 to the ninth. And if you need to go back, you just multiply by 10 to the ninth. So if I just take 405 nanometers and I just divide by 10 to the ninth, I will get 4.05 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. This number is where I'm going to try to fit into my um, electromagnetic spectrum. So I look at the exponent first, I have 10 to the negative seventh. So I'm somewhere in this range, right? 10 to the negative seventh is right here. But now, do I know that I'm in ultraviolet light or am I somewhere between infrared or maybe I'm in this color spectrum? This color is visible light. So here, what I have for you guys right here, this is the spectrum of just the visible light. And the visible light section looks like it starts at around 4,000 angstroms. Now, if you did the conversion, and we did tons of conversions with angstroms in meters uh, back in earlier questions, so if you need the conversion, go see those questions. This is the same thing as saying 4 times 10 to the negative 7th. So this would be 4 times 10 to the negative 7th meters all the way to you know, seven and beyond. So 7.5, 7.6 times 10 to the negative. Um, so we'll just say like 7.4 times 10 to the negative seventh. But our answer is 4.05. So that's a little bit over the 4,000 angstrom, but still it's in the visible light spectra, right? It just makes it. So what region of the electromagnetic spectrum is this? This is in the visible light category. So that's the answer to the first part. Now they just wanted to know what the frequency was. We know how to convert from a wavelength to a frequency. It's using the speed of light formula. C equals wavelength times frequency. And C is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth, if you guys don't know, meters per second. You can simplify that to just three. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just going to use 2.998 times 10 to the eighth equals. Now with this formula, you just have to be certain and just sure that your wavelength has to be in meters. You can never put the nanometer number in there. So I'm going to use the 4.05 times 10 to the negative seventh meter times frequency. Solve for frequency, you divide by uh, 4.05 times 10 to the negative seventh on both sides. 10 to the negative seventh. That cancels out. Frequency equals 2.998 times 10 to the eighth. 2.998 times 10 to the eighth divided by 4.5 times 10 to the negative seventh. You get 6.7 times 10 to the 14th hertz, or you can say per second, cycles per second. It's the same exact thing. So this would be the frequency for that specific wavelength. So this would be 6.7 times 10 to the 14th seconds to the minus one. And A is done. Now we're moving on to B. So I'll just put B over here. B, it says, 
A Blu-ray laser has a power of 5 milliwatts, and 1 watt equals 1 joule per second. So there's a 1 there. How many photons of light are produced by this laser in one hour? Okay, so the first thing I see is that I, I'm going to have to convert because they give me milliwatt and um, the conversion is between watts, right, to get to joules. Now, we've been using formulas before, right, especially the one with energy because energy that we, that we use is the only unit that's basically joule per one photon. And that's how I'm going to get to how many photons of light. I first have to find out this energy, right? Now, the energy is going to come from the five milliwatts, but I have to go from milliwatts to the joules. So first thing I have to do is convert five milliwatts, W-A-T-T-S, into watts. Now, how do I go from milli to watt, milliwatt to watt? This, treat this as a base unit, a BU, base unit, right? And treat this as the prefix. Milli is the prefix. So how do you go from, let's just say, you know, millimeter to meter? How would you guys go by doing that, right? You know that 1,000 millimeters equals one meter. Same thing here. We can say a thousand milliwatts equals one watt. And that's how we're going to convert from milliwatts to watts. So let's start that conversion. Five milliwatts, I'm just going to put MW, times by the ratio. Milliwatts goes on the bottom, watts goes up on top. And the information that we have here is a thousand milliwatts per one watt and the millis cancel out. Now we just have to get it to joules per second. They told us that one watt equaled one joule per second. So times by the ratio, watt on the bottom, joules per second up top, and they just told us that it was a one to one. So it's literally the same amount. So all you would have to do, these cancel out, was just do five divided by a thousand. So that's 0 0.005 joules per second because this is always in the denominator. A negative exponent means that it's just in the denominator. So I have this. Okay. So I'm going to keep that on the back burner. Now, the next part of this is that they tell you that they want how many photons of light are produced in one hour. But here in my conversion, I have seconds. So that's the next step. I have to convert one hour into seconds. The middle guy from hours to seconds would be minutes. I know how many minutes are in an hour and I know how many seconds are in a minute. So let's do that conversion. I have one hour times by the ratio, hour on the bottom, minutes up top. There's 60 minutes for every one hour, and hours will cancel. Minute on the bottom, seconds up top. There's 60 seconds per every one minute. So all this is is just timesing 60 by 60. So now we have 3,600 seconds. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. So let me actually erase this first part because I'm kind of running out of room, running out of room here. So let me get rid of all this. Should get rid of everything. Okay, cool. All right. So now let's just list that over here. I have 0 0.005 joules per second. And I have 3,600 seconds. So look what, look what happens when I times... 3,600 seconds with the answer that I have here. What's going to cancel out? Oh, the, the, the unit seconds. So we're on the right track because now we just have joules. And we know that the energy value that we're going to get is joules per one photon. So we need to just get joules as, our, as one of our answers, not to the question, but in order to get to the next part of this question. So 0 0.005 times 3,600, I get 18 joules. Okay, now this is where the tricky part comes in. 
they didn't specify if we can use A to get our energy value, but we have to. There's no possible way that we could find out how many photons of light without taking the information from A. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to still say that the wavelength for this Blu-ray player was still 405 nanometers, which is the same thing as 4.05 times 10 to the um, negative seventh meters, right? That was from before. Because what we're going to do with this information is we're going to solve for now energy of one photon, energy per photon. That's the formula E equals HC over wavelength. C we've used before. H, remember, is Planck's constant. I'll put it over here. H is 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joules per second. So memorize that formula, guys, because or memorize those conversions or those um, constants. So here we go. Energy equals 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times the speed of light, which is 2.998 times 10 to the eighth, all over the wavelength from A, because we need that or else we wouldn't be able to answer this question, which is 4.05 times 10 to the negative seventh. Get that answer, and that's going to be joule per one photon. So 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th times 2.998 times 10 to the 8th divided by 4.05 times 10 to the negative 7th. And we get 4.9 times 10 to the negative 19th, and that's joule per photon. Okay. We're getting there, guys. I'm just going to erase this part. Hopefully it doesn't cut out the... Oh, perfect. So, the last two pieces of the puzzle remaining is the 18 joules from before and the energy that we got per, for, per photon, 4.9 times 10 to the negative 19 joules per photon. So look at this. I can just single out photon because I have joule and joule. They can cancel out if I use them as conversions. So I'm going to take the 18 joules times by a ratio Joules on the bottom, photon up top. What are the numbers that go here and here? Well, 4.9 times 10 to the negative 19th joules is equal to one photon. So for every one photon, it's 4.9 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. So we just got to divide the two because joules will cancel out. And that's the final answer for B. Crazy, right? 18 divided by 4.9 times 10 to the negative 19th. You get 3.7. 3.7 times 10 to the 19th photons. And that's the answer to the first part. So that is the answer here. I'm just going to put this over here. 3.7 times 10 to the 19th photons. Okay, B is done. Whew. Hopefully C isn't that bad. Now, I think that C we don't need. I'm just going to erase this just to have more room. I think C and D are questions by themselves, so we don't have to pull from other questions. So I'm going to put C over here, and let's get it done. For C, it says, The ideal resolution of a player using a laser, such as a Blu-ray uh, Blu player, which determines how close together data can be stored on a compact disc is determined using the following formula. Then they give us the formula. Resolution equals 0.6 wavelength over NA, where wavelength is the wavelength of the laser, and NA is the numerical aperture. Numerical aperture is a measure of the size of the spot of light on the, des on the disc. The larger the NA, the smaller the spot. In a typical Blu-ray system, NA equals 0.95 if the 405 nanometer laser is used in a Blu-ray player, what's the closest that information can be stored on a Blu-ray disc? Okie dokie. Well, I'm going to write this formula down. Resolution equals 0 0.6 times 
wavelength over Na. So they tell me what the Na value is, right? The numerical aperture, I should really make this a capital A, right? So Na they told us was 0 0.95 and the wavelength that they told us was the 405 nanometer. Now we just gotta basically find out the resolution. They asked for it a fancy way, right? They said over here, um, da -da -da -da. Um, it says over here, what is the closest that information can be stored? And it says that resolution, the ideal resolution, determines how close together data can be stored. So they're basically just asking you for the resolution. Now, they specifically didn't tell you whether we should put this wavelength in terms of nanometers or meters, but I'm just going to convert it into meters. We already have it because it represents what it was in A. So this is 4.05 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. And all you gotta do here is just plug it in. Resolution equals 0 0.6 times 4.05 times 10 to the negative seventh over 0 0.95 and then solve. Resolution equals whatever that answer is. So 0.6 times 4.05 times 10 to the negative seventh. 10 to the negative seventh divided by uh, 0.95. And that would be 2.6 times 10 to the negative seventh. And this would be in uh, meters because this is the only unit that was here and that was in meters. The NA didn't have a unit, so I couldn't cancel it out with anything. This number didn't have a unit, so we can't cancel that out. So this would just be in meters. So this would be your final answer for C. So box that answer off, put it over for C here. I'm just going to put the answer up here. 2.6 times 10 to the negative seventh meters, and that goes for C. Okay, last but not least is D. So let me get rid of this, and then we will start with D, perfect. Okay, so D, it says, the data density of a Blu-ray disc using a 405 nanometer laser is 1.5 times 10 to the seven bytes per uh, millimeter squared. Discs have an outside diameter of 120 millimeters and a hole of 15 millimeter diameter. How many data bytes can be contained on the disc? All right, so that's the first question. So I'm not gonna keep reading on because we gotta answer this question first. All right, so now let me draw what a Blu-ray disc looks like, right? If you guys don't have a Blu-ray player, but they're very, very small. They're smaller than a DVD player, but they're basically a DVD player, but just smaller, right? They still have a disc inside, so it's not a complete circle. Now, they're telling us that the outer diameter, so from here to here, and if I draw this, from here to here, they're telling us that that is 120 millimeters. And they're telling us that the hole diameter from here to here, so if I just draw that, that diameter, and I'll put a little thing here, that's 15 millimeters. And they wanna know how many data bytes can be contained on the disk. And they give us the conversion factor, 1.5 times 10 to the seventh bytes per millimeter squared. So I'm gonna put that over here. We're probably gonna to have to use that some sometime. So 1.5 times 10 to the seventh bytes per millimeter squared. And millimeter squared or any length squared is an area. So this is just an area formula. And what type of um, shape do we have here? We have a circle, right? A Blu-ray disc is a circle. So this is area of a circle. Now, do we know what the area of a circle is? If you don't, it's actually hidden in the problem. If we just keep reading, it says the area inside a circle is given A equals pi R squared. 
So these are both diameters, right? The 15 millimeter was a diameter. The 120 millimeter is a diameter. So we have to find out the radius, right? Because A equals pi r squared. And a radius is just half the denominator, um, the half the um, diameter. So here, if I put diameter divided by two, that would equal my radius. So all I have to do is just take these diameters and divide these by two, and I'll get a radius. So 15 divided by two is 7.5 millimeters. That would be my radius for this one. And 120 divided by two is 60 millimeters. Okay, but now how am I gonna find the radius of the disc? right? From green to green that I drew over here, from green to green. So let's just say, let's take this one in yellow. So if I take the area of the bigger one, which is the yellow one, and I minus it by the area of the smaller one, let's put that one in green. So this is the smaller one, right? The area of the smaller one, which is the green, then I can get the area of the Blu-ray disc because it would literally be just the yellow without the little donut hole in the middle. So it would be the area of the actual Blu-ray disc. So first let's find out the area of the big one. A equals pi r squared. So area equals pi times the radius squared. So the bigger one was 60. So 60 squared. So area equals pi 60 squared. I get 1.13 times 10 to the, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 to the fourth, and that's millimeters squared. So that's the area of the big one. So that's this one, 1 1.13 times 10 to the fourth millimeters squared. Now I just have to minus that by the one in the in the the hole here, right? And that radius was 7.5. So it would be a equals pi times 7.5 squared. So pi 7.5 squared. You get 177 um millimeter squared. So this minus 177 millimeter squared would get you the area of the Blu-ray disc. So 1.13 times 10 to the fourth minus 177, you get basically 1.1, we'll say. 1.1 times 10 to the one, two, three, four, and that's millimeter squared. So that's the area of the Blu-ray disc. But now the question asks for how many data bytes can be contained on this disk. So that's when, if I can just erase this, because we don't need this anymore. So if I can take the, the bits per millimeter squared, 1.5 times 10 to the seventh bits per millimeter squared, and I use the radius that I just found out, if I convert and I times it by 1.1 times 10 to the fourth millimeter squared, what's gonna happen? Oh, the millimeters will cancel out and I'm left with bits. And that's what the question was asking. How many data bits can be contained? Or data bytes? Yeah, data bytes. <laughs> that's what you'll get. So 1.5 times 10 to the seventh times 1.1 times 10 to the fourth and you get 1.65 times 10 to the 11th bytes. And that's the answer to the first part of D. So it's 1.65 times 10 to the 11th data bytes that can be contained on the disk. Now they ask another question. They say, if the Blu-ray disc can hold 9,400,000 pages of text, how many data bytes are needed for a typed page? So here, if I can just erase this part, because we already found out the area. 
right? This is all good. We, we already got, we found all this out. So for this one, if I take 1.65 times 10 to the 11th bytes, and I just divide it by how many pages they told me, 9,400,000 pages, this can be simplified to something over one page. Because any time that I divide by any number, right, I'll always get just one regular number, which will always be put into a fraction by being over one. So if I did 1.65 times 10 to the 11th divided by 9,400,000, you get 1.76 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4 bytes, right? But then just know that that could always be translated to that number over one. And what does the one represent? Oh, it's one page. So that's how many data bytes, 1.76 times 10 to the fourth, are, you know, given in this one typed page. So that's the second answer, 1.76 times 10 to the fourth bytes per the one page. And that's, whew, that was the end to this one. So hopefully this helped you guys out. There was a lot of conversions, a lot of math stuff. They brought back geometry. So hopefully you guys were able to understand this. If you did, click the like button. And if you want more questions with answers in your feed, hit the subscribe button. It will also help gain access to tons of other people who want this service as well, just to kind of get the word out and just bring a sense of community to everybody. All right. So I'll see you guys all in number 15. See you later.